seeing how, how much distortion, propaganda, uh, lies even. Uh, you had uh, mixed with uh, scholarly pretensions uh, you, you, you would get on the topic, which is uh, the attitudes uh, among Arabs in the Arab world toward not only the Holocaust in the strict sense of the term, that is the Jewish genocide, but about Nazism, anti-Semitism, and all these issues. I mean, this kind of propaganda that is very dominant in the Western uh, perception of, of, uh, of this history uh, it has a very negative effect because uh, it, uh, it, uh, it, it actually uh, prohibits uh, any real... Uh, dialogue, any real discussion, because, you know, it's the, the and for good reason, you know, uh, characterizing anyone as being pro-Nazi or uh, even Holocaust denier or whatever is so stigmatizing that it cuts any possibility of dialogue. Since 41, after 41, when uh, the Mufti of Palestine, Amin Husseini, who was the, 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 the main villain of the story, fled to Europe and went to, in exile there and lived between Berlin and Rome and became a prominent collaborator of the two regimes, Italian fascist and the German Nazi regimes. And uh, their uh, spokesperson for, for the Arab and Muslim world. This is when the narrative started you know, unfolding of the Arabs as being uh, allies of the Nazis given the role of the Mufti, or the Palestinians even, uh, more specifically, but even the Arabs at large. And uh, uh, this, of course, increased a lot at the end of the war, when the, the Zionist movement was fighting for the, the creation of, uh, of the state, which would be the, the state of Israel, and fighting for approval by the victors of World War II. This uh, narrative focusing on the central figure of the Mufti and uh, Nazifying the Arabs and the Palestinians. And, uh, well, this is a convenient explanation for, or justification even for a number of things. Like, uh, for instance, saying that, I mean, whatever happened in 1948, what the Palestinians and Arabs called the Nakba, even if you, you can find some people acknowledging that there was uh, an act of ethnic cleansing that took place uh, against the Palestinians in Palestine by the Zionist movement in its fight to, to, to create its uh, state. Uh, that was justified because the alternative to that was a continuation of the Nazi genocide since the Arabs or the Palestinians are depicted as being represented by the figure of the Mufti as a collaborator of, of Nazism. So that's the origin of this whole narrative, and uh, this, this expanded l later on in the sense that regularly you have new um, forces compared to Nazis and Hitler and the rest. And you can see every prominent figure in the confrontation with Israel on the Arab side has been compared to Nazis. This goes for uh, Egyptian President uh, Nasser, who in his time was, you know, compared to Hitler, his regime to a uh, Nazi regime. And so it starts from there, it ends up today with comparisons of uh, movements like Hamas in Palestine or Hezbollah in Lebanon as being similar to Nazis. So just to say that this narrative, this Nazification of the Arabs, uh, and this Nazification of all foes of the State of Israel, of all foes of Zionism, uh, is a very, uh, you know, uh, convenient and uh, easy manner of trying to dismiss completely or discredit completely whatever they, they represent. Of course, there are misuses of the Holocaust for political purposes, and, uh, and I give in the book a lot of uh, examples of, of these. But yeah, people should be aware that the, 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 the Holocaust is such a horrific uh, historical tragedy that, uh, of course, it is uh, very normal that among Jews, uh, generally, 
so including the, the state of Israel, which is a state uh, with a majority of, of, uh, of Jews, of course this would play uh, an important role in the collective conscience. And people should be uh, aware of that uh, uh, as a precondition to be able to have a real dialogue. Because any attitudes ignoring this fact uh, make it uh, uh, very difficult for real dialogue to, to, uh, to take place. So the occurrences of such uh, terrible uh, crimes against humanity, uh, the genocide of the, the Jews, uh, shows that you have a, a really universal problem uh, at the core of it. And uh, therefore, the, the lessons of all that, uh, the, the, the necessary fight against any form of racism, discrimination, ethnic hatred, and the rest, uh, these are really universal lessons whatever direction is the ethnic hatred, hatred of the Jews, hatred of Arabs, hatred of Muslims, hatred of you name it. I mean, all these uh, forms of hatred uh, are, are really very dangerous, very dangerous. Now, we, we've seen what, uh, what anti-Semitism produced historically. So for Palestinians who are victims of an ethnic oppression, who uh, are faced with a state which is uh, practicing this oppression. They should themselves identify with the Jewish victims of the Holocaust and say we are also victims, we, we have to identify with all victims. In, in my approach of Holocaust denial, for instance, attitudes uh, that have been developing among some sectors in the Arab world over the last two, three decades, uh, in approaching this, in explaining without justifying or excusing, but explaining the context. At the same time, I don't mince my words, uh, I condemn Holocaust denial attitudes, I condemn anti-Semitic expressions. I explain that there are a lot of other attitudes in the same Arab world among Palestinians and among Arabs. I denounce the tendency to present Palestinians or Arabs as one monolithic group with authors speaking of the Arab discourse or the Palestinian discourse or the Arab attitude in the singular as if the Arabs or the Palestinians, you know, uh, were, were just uh, a homogeneous uh, political group or some sect with one single uh, position, which is absurd, of course. So you have a range of positions among the Palestinians in reaction to what they experience from Israel. And it's a matter of political choices, education and conscience. The hostility, the specific hostility towards uh, Jews that developed in the, in the Middle East was a product of the Israel-Palestine conflict. That is, it was a watershed in, in the history of relations between Muslims and Jews or Arabs and Jews. If you believe, like I do, that the anti-Semitic attitudes that are to be found among Palestinians, Arabs, and there are there, but they are not only attitudes, far from it, but that these attitudes are part of a range of attitudes uh, 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 which result from the uh, Israel-Palestine conflict, then you get to a very different conclusion, one which explains that in the same way that such attitudes resulted from a history of oppression, uh, they, they can be dispelled by a change in the conditions, by a, a resorption of this oppression and the rest. But you have a state which wants the Palestinians to recognize it at, as a Jewish state, a state which claims very loudly that it is the state of the Jews and even of the, world, the Jews of the world. Uh, so you have this there, some anti-Jewish attitudes with not always being able to make the distinction which is absolutely necessary between the Zionist Jew and, and non-Zionist. Uh, the, the Palestinians, they have there a domineering state uh, which is by far the most powerful military power in the region which has waged war after war and more and more violent and oppressive. And you, the fact that you have among those who are, you know, uh, suffering all that, some 
uh, the development of attitudes like uh, anti-Jewish or anti-Semitic uh, or Holocaust denying is, is of course wrong, but we have to understand that it is a reaction of the weak. It is a, a, a reaction of uh, uh, people who are oppressed and against their oppressors, however incorrect and wrong it is. The state of Israel in its relation with Palestinians is the oppressor. And therefore, the anti-Arab racism in Israel, to forget all that and focus all the attention on the Arabs and the Palestinians, uh, requesting from them to be 100% perfect, you know, they should behave. They should all be politically correct. They should, you know, as if there were any people on earth politically correct as a whole. I mean, it's a, you know, you have various currents and attitudes within any, any people. So you have this attitude toward them and forgetting completely any critical stance towards what's happening in Israel. That, that, that doesn't work. Take, 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 take these words home and think, 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 think.